What's up guys, this is Vag Camera from Gmite. Today I want to show you a really cool trick. It's very quick, it's very easy, and it can instantly kind of expand smaller sets into something bigger. What you're seeing right now is my latest release at AS, which is this abandoned suburb um, house. And it's actually much smaller than, than we can see here, right? I've made it kind of cool looking and so forth. But it's it's kind of like a smaller set, all right. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna use perspective view so we can zoom out on the scenery so we can see how it actually looks like, right? Let's remove all the stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna remove all the roof edges, all the side buildings, the back buildings, and all that, right? And what you're gonna see is exactly the single thing I scanned. So I scanned pretty much this corner of this building, right? There we go. Pretty much this corner of this building. Now, in order to use smaller kind of scenes and make them look bigger, you can clone, so when I clone this, right, using node instance, so new node, and that now becomes a copy. I'm gonna unparent this and just use copy and then paste on this copy right so it ends up at the same spot and now what we can do is grab that instance using for instance translate tool and we can move it to a new location all right and instantly expand the scene now there's a few things you can do to avoid repetition sometimes you know repetition is unavoidable and you just have to deal with it right but there is a thing you can do you can rotate your items right i'm just gonna do 90 degrees here like so whoops what just happened i'm at zero there we go right and you can use this side and it looks like a different portion, although it's it's this side on the left you see here, right? But it looks different, right? And now when you get closer now, what you can do is look at the ground and how these both parts merge together. Often you can grab one of the props and just, you know, either move it down or up to change how the ground pieces interact with each other. Or you can bring a, a kind of third component to it. You can add a water plane and submerge your buildings into water, or you can add an additional uh, ground uh, prop, right? But moving this around and finding a good spot and elevation will, you know, make it mix better, right? So another thing you can do is, of course, you can grab that building again, node instance, and copy that again. What I did is I used a portion of that set right in this corner, right? So I just use, I bumped that corner into here to extend this building, and then I used the one on the left to fill the gap and just remove. Uh, the stuff that I don't need to see, right? So that kind of expanded this smaller area. And see how quick it is, right? And you can just find a good spot to uh, create those um, connections, so to speak. Now, a cool thing you can use is scale. So for instance, let me remove one of these so we just have less stuff to play with. You can play with scale. So you can scale items down if necessary. Uh, maybe buildings is not the best example of that, but there is other props you can copy and rescale, right? So sometimes see if you can scale them down, if that makes them fit better, right? Another thing you can do is, whoops, let me just get it back again. There we go. Another thing you can do is um, scale on the x y or z axis right so that can shift and expand areas if you need to if you need a little bit longer wall well you can grab that x slider and just expand it uh, if you don't see the window so much it's not a big deal right 
Then you can also, of course, also scale on up and down if you need to, right? Or in and out of your scene. You can make items, uh, no, appear thicker or thinner, right? So, is there anything else you can do? Yes, it is. Not many applications allow this, but a cool thing you can do in Dash Studio is to mirror the X or whatever scale you have, right? So you can enter negative number to scale the building and mirror it. Now that then becomes a totally different thing you can use here, right? Which is really, really cool. Now you can also mirror on, uh, let's say, whoops, that was a little bit too thin, right? That was paper thin. You can mirror on the Y scale as well. So make things upside down completely, right? That also gives you more options when you're playing, maybe not with buildings, but other stuff, right? And of course, you can also mirror on this scale, which is Z, right? This one here, um, to completely change how things look like that way, all right? Just be careful when you're mirroring so that text doesn't appear weird looking. If someone, there's some graffiti on this uh, particular set, right? But if someone writes a text saying, let's just say, uh, uh, mirror, if you mirror, mirror is not going to be mirror, right? It's going to be wrong direction of the text. But if it's just, you know, something generic, you can do that. And finally, just a small tweak you can do. Uh, remember, when you clone items like this, you can have many clones, right? They all um, kind of wear the same settings as the base uh, item, right? So if you go ahead here and select all of these and change them to, well, just something blue tinted, the copy will also follow, right? So if you want to have uh, individual kind of copies, you need to load a new um, new prop, right? So you can just select, if you just have one uh, set in prop in your scene, you can just select save subset. And here, I want to just call it building. All right, and we're going to just select that prop, nothing else. So we can, if you have more items, you can just deselect them here, right? And just save. So now if you go back to that folder, when, when it loads, you have something called building. You can now click on that, double click, sorry, to get a copy, a fresh copy into your scene. That's not a copy, it's an individual item. Here, house number two, right? So that one now has individual surface settings or material settings. So you can now go ahead and change that to something else. All right. Oh, I changed the original. That doesn't matter, right? You see that you can now have individual control over colors. That's also an option that can give you, uh, you know, more kind of. Well, if you end up with uh, things that look like repetition, like clones, like lots of copies, and they look all the same, this is one way at which you can, you know, which you can use to kind of change the look of things. All right. Pretty much that's all for this video, guys. There's a link below uh, to this prop in my dad's store. And also, currently, most items in my store, I believe over 400 items, are on a 60% off sale right now. Right? So, if you missed you know, some items in the past, now is a good time to check out my store at dad's. Link below this video. Now, also, there is a link below for more free stuff and also training for Dash Studio, right? Video training for Dash Studio. You have that one dollar trial. We can access uh, starter videos to get it going and create Dash Studio art quicker and faster, and make it look better. So, guys, that's pretty much all for now. Thanks so much for watching. Have fun, and I'll see you soon again.